Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode, episode 91 of the Struggling Hunters. You got Eric over there in Colorado, and you have me, Joe, here in Utah. And if you're uh, tuning in for the first time, uh, we get on once a week, share our thoughts on, uh, on hunting, elk hunting, deer hunting, uh, maybe some of the things that we're going through. Uh, we kind of, um, what do you our premises on the struggling hunters is, you know, like the hunting community, um, be, be better th this next year than you were this year. And, uh, you know, and passion for the sport. Um, as the name says it, we're, we are struggling hunters. <laughs> uh, we'll probably always be, well, we plan to improve ourselves, but, uh, thanks for tuning in. And, uh, those that have been listening to us, we appreciate it. Um, you know, it's, Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the ride as much as we have. Um, we appreciate you sticking through and, and, uh, and staying with us. But so this, this week's episode on 91, uh, we're going to be talking about, if you've been following us, we've, we've been going through an article with uh, the American hunter and uh, it's um, the, it's bow hunting elk. And there's a couple different topics that they have. So, we're going to be going over number six and then we're going to be talking about for those of you that have probably been following, I don't know if uh, I've just got turned on to him this last year, but the a guy's YouTube channel called uh, elk shape, Dan Stanton, I believe is his name. Um, he had an, uh, an incident, I guess if you want to call it incident in New Mexico, that we're going to discuss and give our, our two cents on, on what happened um but i guess with that i don't have anything else as far as the introduction goes and that's going to be more or less the gist of our uh, podcast today so uh please stay tuned and uh and give us a, a listen for the remainder of this episode so number six is where we're at in our uh, little magazine article do you remember? You want me to go? Uh, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I was looking for something, and uh, and I, I know that it's uh, it's you know uh, sound like an elk, and I I guess I didn't quite. <clears throat> sorry if I sound a little froggy, uh, but <clears throat> I wasn't quite too sure on how to on if we wanted to read a little bit from the article or or just kind of give our our two cents on it, but I'll let you. I guess take it from there. <laughs> are, are you sure, Big Show? Well, you know, I feel like I just murdered that and lost my uh, <laughs> my ability <laughs> to be called the Big Show because I uh, <laughs> I dropped the ball. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Well, you're never not gonna be the Big Show in my eyes. So, <laughs> but uh, well, yeah. That, so, getting back to the podcast, though. Uh, yeah, number six this week is sound like an elk. Um, there's a couple of things in the in the article that are or in the paragraph that it it has here. Uh, the idea that elk have heard it all. Uh, I think that's that's true nowadays. You know, is everybody has a reed and a and a bugle tube and you know cow calls. So, uh, you know, I feel like by the by the end of the season at times. Um, they're they're kind of tuned in to to what it you know what the fake bugle <laughs> sound like and the fake cow call sound like and and uh um but also to further on that point though is is uh is going into further like sounding like an elk is is uh you know snapping twigs rustling brush um you know that kind of stick against deadfall <laughs> logs and I, I'd say that that's something, you know, like when I first read the, the, the title, you know, sound like an elk, my mind went directly towards bugling or cow calling, you know, like, oh, gotcha. you know, like what you just read sounding like an elk, like that's the other half to it. Like that's bugling, cow calling or chirping or whatever. That's 50% of it. But, you know, right. like, but if you got a, if you're a bull that's in the rut, and you know, I guess 
I guess I haven't seen it personally. I've, I've seen evidence of rubs and whatnot and seen, uh, you know, horns broke off, antlers broke off, but, you know, elk are going to make, make noise. One, they're big animals. And two, when that rut's going on, you know, they're, they want, they want to show the intimidation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you, that's one thing that I, I really like about elk hunting is you don't have to, you don't have to try to be a ninja going through the woods necessarily. You know, you can snap a twig or two and not really worry about the whole mountain or, you know, all the elk running off the mountain. Cause more than likely they, they, they probably won't jump at that first twig snap or whatever, you know, cause they're, they're right. going to think, Oh, one of us, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so, it, it, I mean, that stuff kind of all, it works out in your favor to, to make a little bit of noise. And, and, uh, I remember years ago, whenever I was a young guy, guy told me that he said, he said, most people try to creep around the woods and hunt their elk and try not to make a noise. He's like, I'm practically running through the woods, making all the noise. And I'm like, that really works. You know, it, it blew my mind, you know, cause I was, you know, hunting whitetail and everything you're trying. Right. To yeah. Be very, I heard... very quiet. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, hunting, hunting whitetail. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> like I hunt growing up like that, you know, like thinking back, there was a guy growing up that told me the same. I think I can't remember. It's been long enough now. I can't remember if it was him or another buddy, but they were bow hunting and uh, they came across the herd down, down in this, in the, in a little valley or something on a hillside. And I can't remember if it was this guy or his buddy, but he just took off running like into the herd, you know, uh -huh. not running around trees or, you know, like trying to be quiet, but he just took off running. And I guess that worked and it got him into him. And, <clears throat> you know, like I've heard that story and I was you know, like, like I heard it when I was a teenager and here I am, you know, in my thirties and, I'm just barely realizing that, no, that is a tactic. You know, you, you don't have to be a uh, stealthy Sammy, you know, you, you, you can make noise and just don't, you know, use your aluminum arrows. I know we don't use aluminum arrows, but you know, to, to make the noise with it or, you know, metal sounds, if you use those natural sounding noises to them, that's an elk. Yeah. And it's taken me this long to comprehend that. Uh, well i think everything is trial and error too you know i mean there's a lot of the things that i didn't do in the past that i done this last year and found success and i'm like wow that really does work you know and and i think everything is trial and error and whatever works for you you know i mean that's what it comes down to at the end of the day i guess is whatever works for you but these are just tips of um you know, sounding like an elk is just a tip to try to get closer to elk. And, and like a, my little, my experience, it works, it works, you know? Um, and, and like I said, the biggest thing, my biggest takeaway with this pointer is besides the bugling side is, uh, is the snapping the twigs and stuff. Uh, I like the, the idea of it that, you know, you can kind of make a mistake if you will. And, you know, cause you're trying to be quiet, but I mean, if you, you know, you snap a twig or whatever, it's not the end of the world. Whenever, right. when you're elk hunting, the biggest thing is, is being winded by an elk. Right. I mean, technically that's, that's one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is if you're winded. Correct. So, so Correct. you could you snap a twig or, you know, whatever, but it's the winded part. That's the biggest part. Right. That's the one but going thing, on. The one thing you can't fool is his nose. You might be able to exactly. fool his ears. You might be able to get away with his eyesight. You might get away with his fooling as his intuition. But as soon as his nose says, that's no elk, he gone. He, he's gone, gone. He gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hundred percent. hundred percent. But I wanted to, I wanted to also add in, cause this is something that I, that I did this last year and, and I think it actually helps. Um, so sounding like an elk, uh, 
with the bugling and everything, you know, like, uh, I think, I think sometimes you can kind of sound, um, you know, they, they could, they could predict what, if you're a human or not. Right. But if you bring an extra read with you, which I did this year and I would blow on, I would blow on both reads and I would, especially with cow calls, I would take one read and make a cow call, grab the other read, make a cow call. And, um, I think it kind of helps. I think it kind of helps mix it up, makes it sound like there's more than just one cow or, right. You know, hopefully this next year, which I probably should start working on it now, I guess. Correct. Is, is, but, uh, when does the, when does next season start? Uh, as soon as the last one ended. Correct. (laughs) Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but (laughs) no, I, I, I was with you though. I knew what you were talking about. Um, but yeah, learning learning the different pitches of cows, Correct. cow calls and stuff. I think yeah. uh, think that would that would kind of help us get on that note. Like I've had a hard time trying to find something that kind of explains what the different cow calls are and go over with you. So my thought was I haven't done it yet, but I just had this. I think it was this weekend. Uh, was just gonna download an app like a cow or an elk calling app. You know, like elk noises app. And then just see if it has like the different sounds that cow makes. And then that way, it, you know, like it might hopefully it'll explain a little bit what that sound is. And I can just hit that sound over and over in the app and then just try to mimic it. You think that, do they have an app out there? I'm sure or, they do. Or, or are you just going to look for it? Cause that's a great idea actually. Cause I'm sure if they have a list list of like a calf cow and right. Or, or a calf and a cow and a, a calf calling for his mom or whatever right, cause cow calling for people are always like you gotta know these different types of calls and it's like okay where do i learn that like yeah i, I mean I, I know i gotta be out in the woods but like i can't be out there 100 percent of the time following a herd around and be like oh that that there's a little cow calling for its mom like i do understand that's good there's gonna be a pitch difference but you know i don't know what where to cut it off and when to lay into it <laughs> I feel like I feel like uh, if you YouTube like uh, elk calling uh, competitions, they, oh, they might have. Well, I was thinking of was trying to find a way to do it as I drive drive to and from work too. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, it makes sense. But anyways, I went down and took us down a rabbit hole there, trying to sound like an elk, and I think I took took off off the platform that you were you were going down your rabbit hole but but i will say though that's a pretty hot tip though i i mean i i it was whenever i heard it i thought it was a good idea so i'm sure other people that hear that probably think the same thing so i think it was worth the the rabbit hole (laughs) good (laughs) but well speaking of elk i mean the other topic that we were going to talk about was uh was like Joe said earlier is uh, there's a YouTube channel out there called Elk Shape. Some of you guys probably heard of him before or watched him. Um, he has a, pr- a fairly sizable channel. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, Joe and I have been watching some of his stuff and seems like a pretty good guy. Um, but he, he just released a couple videos uh, within the last week or so. Right. And uh, uh, with uh, him hunting down in New Mexico, and uh he was out there hunting and uh well he called out unit nine in new mexico so right i I don't know uh it doesn't really mean much to me because i've never never been over there but uh uh he he called out unit nine in new mexico and and the premise of this is is there was uh they were they were running around hunting and and he he called out in the video he said he said man there's there's like this this truck that was like in the middle of the road and you know it didn't really make sense but you know it's like these these guys down here are kind of kind of a-holes they're doing a-hole moves you know and and um i i don't know if you want to explain it from there or, or no i, I think you're more. doing a good good enough job okay <laughs> so as uh as he kept or as the the uh show went on uh toward the end of the first the part one of this this uh youtube video 
uh, you should look it up and see if you can find the title just to kind of help. Um, anyways, of this YouTube video, he, uh, he said, uh, this, this guy came up to him and, and was telling him that it, that they were on private property, but it was public land. It was state land, but it was, it was, uh, leased out for hunting rights to, uh, uh, was it Floyd Lee? Yeah, Floyd Lee. <laughs> I heard. I mean, the, the, the I was kind of cracking up in whenever I was watching that because I'm like, I'm like this Floyd Lee guy, man. He's getting picked on so hard right now because <laughs> they said his name like a million times. It seemed like, but anyways. Um, so there's three videos, and the first one is uh, New Mexico archery elk, a wild a hunt, and then the second one is kicked off public land the New Mexico dirt. Uh, the third one is kicked off public land. Part two, trying. Oh, shoot. Sorry. <laughs> trying to tag out. So those are the three episodes. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. Anyways, um, definitely a good, good episode to watch. I mean, I, I enjoyed besides the drama, uh, I, the drama probably kept me engaged, but I thought it was a good video all the way around. Um, I mean, I've been watching him a little bit before that anyway. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I like his content, but anyway, um, he, uh, I guess the premise of all this is, is there was an outfitter company that was in this area and it seemed like they were doing some shady stuff. Is Flying helicopters low. Fly, um, yeah. I forgot about the helicopter. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Flying helicopters low. Um, getting up on the top of this this knob and, and then passing down and walking down telling people they were on private property yeah that they they couldn't hunt elk down there they could be on the property but they couldn't hunt on the property or something like that too yeah and and you know whenever uh dan dan is his name when dan was asking the guy he goes he goes wait so am i on state pro state property right now and and it was funny because he was like yeah you're on state property but you can't be here and he's like, well, that doesn't make sense. Or, you know, it was something in that premise, but, uh, and, and, uh, you know, it, good on Dan though, to, to, in my opinion, good on him to keep, you know, asking the question and really not right. letting it go because that, that's ridiculous. So right. to try to give more to the story is it was an outfitter company that company that was, you know, for their clients trying to kick other public hunters off of this of state land. land and the thing is, is they were trying to say that it was leased out for hunting and but, for cattle grazing and for cattle grazing which even where i hunt that like i mean that's a that 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 goes on everywhere you know they lease right. out land for cattle or whatever that goes on everywhere but leasing out land for just hunting like public land is public land so they were being shady and that man that guy Right. That, that, the guy that was trying to push this like um I, I was I, I give it I give it to Dan I give it to Dan for being is I know that he was probably I deep down inside he was probably pretty agitated right but I give it to him for being as calm as he was because I was like I was like dude at some point I would just flip the flip flip the script to be like dude you need to shut up and drive out of here before I flip out on you. Cause like just listening to that guy was, was ticking me off. And, and I kept thinking, I'm like, man, do, do, do well, people really do this? Like right. that was the thing that was mind boggling me. I'm like, I've never had that kind of trouble out in the. Right. Well, and the other thing too, for me was a fact, or he's like, Dan, I think it was Dan finally says, well, I want the fishing game officer here. Do you have him on speed dial? What's his name? Yeah, you know, and then, again the guy's like oh i don't know who he is yeah i don't even know the guy it's like well well wouldn't you if you have this problem every year of people supposedly trespassing onto your hunting rights land wouldn't you have the game warden like hey i have someone out here that's not supposed to be here wouldn't like yeah. wouldn't you take care of it that way if it was the right thing to do if it was legal what you were doing yeah yeah I can't believe that stuff goes on, but you know, anybody listening to this, I guess that, you know, I mean, we're just cussing and discussing about it, but one thing is don't put up with that kind of stuff. 
from anybody because public land is public land. And that was the thing too, is Danny was like, I have it on Onyx. Like I know Onyx isn't the be all tell all, but like I've been tracking my track all day and I haven't went on private at all. I've been on state land. He's like, what are you talking about? And, the, and then that guy's like, well, I was up on the hill watching you cross the pr- private property. He's like, but I got my tracks right here. Like, right. You know, that, that was the part where I was like, that's where I'm like, man, I, I got to hand it to him for staying pretty, pretty calm because that guy, that's where I was kind of really getting like, man, that guy is an a-hole. Right. Here, here's the thing is these guys are pushing that public land is public land we all own that and dealing with other hunters it sucks sometimes sometimes you get blown out of your spot that you wanted to put all your time in you get blown out of your spot because there's somebody else there first my thought is is if they're there first you turn around and try to go the other way because they were there first they beat you there right uh you know not everybody thinks that way but that I, I feel like that's the, the, the gentleman's agreement is if somebody else is there before you, you turn around, you, 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 you have to come up with a new game plan. If you're there before them, they have to come up with a new game plan or you guys could work together. Maybe, maybe, right. Hey, you know, I'm just passing through this area. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go this way. You know, does that work for you? Yeah, that works for me. Cause I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working this way or what, whatever the case may be but that's what we got to do as public land people. But the part that made me the most like agitated about it or made me all fired up about it is, is the fact that another man who is equal to you that, I mean, and and technically Dan spent more money, more likely spent more money on, on his tag than, than that guy anyway, but that's neither here or there. That's because Dan was from out of state, but the, the point is, is like, they're equal there. They're, right. There's equal, there, there's equality there. And for another person to be like, well, I deserve this more than you do. Where, where do they get that right? That's what makes me very agitated about people that do this. Cause it's like, we're all sharing public land, you know? And, right. and yeah. if you pay to be there, if you pay the state to be there to hunt that animal, you have just as much right as anybody else. Now, I mean, I know the spin on this outfitter guy. Uh, you know, I mean, he was just trying to get people away, but like the 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 kahunas that this guy had to be like, no, no, you can't be here. Right. Well, I thought it was interesting too how he kept going, well, go talk to Floyd Lee. He'll be happy to talk to you. Go talk to him. And instead of like, no, go talk to the fish and game guy. Go talk to, you know, like why can't we go to the people that actually have the authority? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to go take it to Floyd Lee. Like that didn't make any sense either. Yeah. The whole thing didn't make any sense, but Floyd Lee's well, making money off the tag. So of course he's going to say he can't be there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 That, that, that was, uh, that was some, that was some dirty stuff. And, and you know, is that ethical hunting too, by the way? Like, uh, so they were flying helicopters, which is, uh, I, I don't know the penalty behind it, but, uh, I, as far as I understand is, is it's illegal to hunt or, or to fly above where you're hunting within a few days of hunting there. Right. Within it might even hours. be a week. What is it? I know. Like, 24 hours like you have to if you fly over where you're hunting you have to wait a whole 24 hours before you can go out okay yeah i i feel like colorado is is more time than that it's something that i kind of like glassed over whenever i was going through the regs but i i didn't retain it because it doesn't i mean i what are you gonna fly over your hunting area (laughs) yeah i don't have i don't have access to a plane so or a helicopter um but uh yeah this guy like the money that it takes to fly over an area. That's where I'm like, I'm like, what, what is this? Is this even, I mean, they're outfitters. So they're trying to, they're trying to, uh, you know, they're making money by guiding people and stuff. So, um, I mean, I guess I get that they would do this because 
the penalty is less than what the money that they're making for getting the hunt, but it's just unethical. I guess that's my point is, and there, there's other horror stories like kind of going off of that. We could get back to it in a second, but I know you've told me of, of um, outfitters that you've heard stories about over there in Utah yeah, that do some pretty unethical stuff and try to try to like block the roads for, uh, for regular or, you know, your everyday hunter to go through. Right. I haven't been part of any, like when I say a part of it, I wasn't like, I was the one blocking roads, but I mean, I haven't been a part of like, <laughs> you got to watch out for big show over here, man. He'll block <laughs> all the roads. Uh, but I haven't, you know, seen any, seen it happen. I've just, I've had some pretty, uh, people that won't be yes. Yeah. Um, tell me about it about stories that they've seen and had stuff happen to them, to their friends and stuff out in the woods. Yeah. 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 It's just kind of a dirty game. I mean, I know outfitters they're, they're running a business and, and stuff, but. Well, that's like, I thought it was interesting too, where that dude, wish I can remember, I guess it doesn't matter. I can't remember that guy's name that was working for Floyd Lee, but uh, how he's like, well, if you paid so much money for a tag to be guided, wouldn't you want all your chances and have people coming over here and taking that away from you? Wouldn't you be pissed? And like Dan's like, I'm pissed that I can't, you're, you're kicking me off this property that I have every right to be on. I'm yeah. paying my taxes. I've, you know, this isn't cheap, easy for me. Like I'm, you know, it goes both ways here. <laughs> Just because they're paying $10,000 doesn't make, make them more of a hunter than me. That's paid $1,200 plus gas to get here. Yeah. They're, they're, they're paying, they're paying, that ten thousand dollars to that guy right but at the like whenever it comes to the 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 tag it's the same price either way so you know like that has nothing to do with the state the state didn't say hey if you pay ten thousand dollars you can't be uh nobody else can hunt on this that, like, right. that's a state thing that's not an out that that's the outfitter being greedy that's not the that's not the state saying this is a $10,000 area that, you know, like, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. It makes me cringe. You, you know, I've always been kind of a, uh, I mean, and you know, maybe this is why I don't have the success rate, but I've always been more of a D DIY guy whenever it comes to hunting. Like I, the, the idea of having to get an outfitter, I've always been like, yeah, not for me I, and i'm not i mean i know there's ethical outfitters and stuff and you know right. um, correct i mean you know i think they i think most of them do a great job and stuff but um uh, i don't know that kind of stuff just it puts a bad name for the good the good outfitters i'll put it that way right. it, it puts a bad bad name but you know i'm glad that uh elk shape the elk shape channel uh, put that video out there and, and really, really showed that. Cause, uh, I, I know. So, uh, I was watching it all last night and, and I sent it over to Joe and I'm like, we got to talk about this tomorrow. And he's like, I've already seen those videos. And, but, uh, you know, the point is, is like, yeah, it just, it was, it fired me up. I was just like, right. man. <clears throat> what about, what about you though? I feel like I've been kind of talking about <laughs> all of this and you've been kind of, agree but like how do you feel about it well it's like one of those things like how shady is it you know like yeah he's kind of claiming like well my clients pay x amount of dollars to be here and you know and like dan's like no i've paid x amount of dollars to be here too and i have every right to be on the state property and you know like yeah and it's you know i got that guy is probably getting paid he says he's a blue collar guy just like us but that was on the floyd lee side of the fence but you know that seemed he he got to be paid a lot of money to, to deal with kicking people off of public property state-owned property but man, you know. I don't, one thing about that because I, I i was thinking that too i'm like man how much do i got making like if it would have been legit that's one thing but i was like right. right i was whenever i was watching that i'm like i would hate that job that job would yeah. not be fun for me no and Cause well, at first the way it was presented, well, I don't want to give the, I mean, we've kind of given it away a little yeah, bit. I'd say go ahead and talk about it. Um, 
the way it was presented, I, I, so the way, the way that the, the videos were presented is like toward the end of the, the part one of that video. I'm like, well, what happened? Like, what was it? Was it, was the guy being truthful or was he, you know? So I was like, I got to watch the next episode, obviously. Cause right. Um, cause I was confused too. Cause I'm like, yeah, I've never, I mean, cause when they were talking about it, like the, my first thought and they ended up saying it, but my first thought is I've heard of cattle leases, but hunting leases, like what, right. what, yeah. what is that? You know, from state land, I'm like, I'm like, man, I, I know there's so much more I got to learn about, about, uh, you know, hunting regs and stuff like that, but I've never heard of that, you know? So I'm sitting there thinking that. And then um, the next episode comes along and they're like, they have the uh, fish and game officer on, on the phone. And, and he's like, you can hunt that, you know? And, um, and I was like, man, but before all that, I was like, before I knew for sure, or on that first video, before I knew for sure, if, if I was like, man, that job would suck to have to kick people, you know, people thinking that they're doing the right thing. And then you're like, no, you can't be here kind of thing. I'm like, that job would suck. And then, but then it flipped whenever I found out the, or whenever the, the, the next episode said the other way and was like, was like, no, that's open to everybody. I don't, you know, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I was like, man, that sleaze ball, man, that guy is a sleaze ball. I'm glad. I'm glad that, I mean, it doesn't, it might not matter unless you're from New Mexico, but I'm glad that uh, Dan actually showed his face on that, on that video, you know, cause sometimes they'll blur the face out or whatnot, but yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but I'm glad that he did it though. Cause dude, those sleaze balls don't need to. Right. You know, they need to be, they need to be out- ousted. Yeah. If, oust- if that's the right word. <laughs> so, but yeah, that was, uh, that was it. That was an interesting episode. And, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty mind boggling. That kind of drama. Um, I, I, it, it blew me away. Yeah. Watch that. Right. And like, I kind of went along with them for a second where he's like, Oh, our, our fences get cut from people driving out and, and they get in their elk and then coming back in, you know, and going through, I was like, I get that. Like, yeah, I'll be pissed too. If my fences get cut, like, cause I think he has to, as far as, as far as some of the cattle leases, you know, like you have to maintain the fence or whatever to keep your cows in. And if you have people cutting them, like, that's not good. You know, I mean, if anything, if you're going to cut, replace, you know, fix it, but probably don't, shouldn't cut it in the first place, but yeah. So, I mean, I'd be pissed about that if I was a cattle rancher people cutting my fences and I have to always go and maintain fences for no reason because people are too lazy one to either pack it out or two to fix the fence <clears throat> but with that being said he doesn't have it seems like in what everything that's been shown he doesn't have right to kick hunters off the property anyways yeah yeah well I mean two things is, is if you're an ethical hunter uh, you should be an ethical sportsman in that way too. If you're crossing a fence and you know, you break it, I mean, at least attempt to try to put it back together. You know, sometimes I've been in those situations where some like that's happened. It's like, ah, there's not much I could do, but I could try to hang it up or do this or, you know, whatever to try to, you know, quote unquote, fix it the best I can. Uh, I mean, I did that. Uh, there was this, wired gate that uh that i went through and a couple days before i went through it the this this one time uh it was perfect and then i went back there and it was all broken the uh the post was was busted in half so i probably spent and this was like in the evening hunt but i had my son with me too and i'm like i'm gonna try to do the right thing just show carter you know show my boy sometimes you just gotta take a time out and do the right thing and, uh, so I, we, we went through the fence and then I was like, I'm going to find another stick or, or another post or something, you know, and I found some, it probably only lasted a few more openings, but I, I, you know, I kind of hobbled it together and put it back together and made it better than what it was anyway. 
And, uh, you know, I just feel like that's just what you got to do, man. Try to do the right thing, you know? Right. Just try to do the right thing. And you usually don't have to do nothing. Don't have to worry about nothing. But yeah, I don't know. I, that one really got me though. I just couldn't believe that that right. well, back he, to the, he said he would sit there just straight faced. No, you can't be here. Go talk to Floyd Lee. He'll be happy to talk to you. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. We've had problems every year. Um, yep. Yeah. No, so you can't be on here. Just letting you know, I can't be on public property hunting public. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, and that, that's, what's funny. That's, what's funny about that whole situation is, uh, is looking back on that video now when when they were confronted in in the very beginning he was like his, his state let he kept saying like uh you know they they were on the wrong side or whatever and he's like wait a minute so am i on state land now or am i not on state land and then he'd be like oh you're on state land but then he'd say like oh you're you're on private and he's like well which one is it you know it didn't quite go that way, but I, I remember whenever I was watching it, it was kind of like that. He was very, he didn't, he didn't know what he was talking about. The guy that was trying to push him off, he was trying to make up stuff as he went along, I think. And to make his point and, and, right. uh, and so he was kind of in my, you know, he was kind of caught in a lie, but obviously like, dan didn't really know for sure you know he was just trying to figure it out but but i'm kind of glad that he stuck to his guns and like i said i mean there was a few points there where i probably would have lost my head um and he kept his cool which was cool but um you could tell there you know he was he was, it looked like he was pretty close to being like what the hell is this you know and and uh and he did he did good he did good but yeah, very in, in, interesting episode. Uh, you know, definitely just look up Elk Shape. You'll pro you'll find his video, and uh, uh, very interesting to watch and see it all play out. And and besides the drama, though, I mean that's obviously what our but the rest of the video was pretty good too. I thought. Yeah. You know, no, well, it was well, well yeah, done. It was a good. He, he he did show he you know his hunting video was good. Yeah. Uh, with that going on with it too so yeah it's a good video to go watch but that was definitely some extra spice though mm. with that yeah it was <laughs> do you have uh much much more no i think i got things covered that i was re ready for tonight so, so no final no final thoughts uh I had some earlier as we we're get, getting going. I was like, ah, it'll be good to close on that, but I can't remember what those were. Uh, ah. But, uh, you know, uh, the end of the season is the beginning of another season. So uh, keep keep working at it. Don't give up because the last day of the season's over. You have that many days to get ready for the next season. Well said. My, uh, my closing thought before I get us out of here is uh, – don't let outfitters be douchebags. And uh, with that said, guys, thanks for listening to the Struggling Hunters. Give us a like, share, comment, uh, whatever you can think of to help us out. That'd be pretty pretty cool. Yes. We'd be uh, pretty excited about that. So uh, with that said, we're the Struggling Hunters, and we are out. Thanks, guys. <laughs>